Here's a weird idea. What if there was no intro? Let's go. Nah. My name is Dave Connery and I'm an artist and designer based in Southern California. And today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a logo and get an Affinity Designer. And here's the thing, I'm not a logo designer. Wait, let's talk about that thought for one second, okay? Number one, it's not my forte. Number two, I don't get inspired to make logos for things. The only thing I really get inspired to make as, as logos go is, you know, t-shirt graphics. There's nothing on this shirt. The video I did last week was kind of about t-shirt graphics. I mean, it was really about, you know, kind of filters and how to do these things, but they could be applied to t-shirt graphics and could be applied, and I kind of did a logo of sorts. It's something I can do. It's just not my main thing, you know what I mean? I'm doing it here because I know a lot of you guys like to know how to make logos or want to see different techniques on logos, which is actually what we're going to do today in Affinity Designer. Into the screen. So what we're going to try to do today is replicate this design. I say replicate. Because a lot of times when I do these things, like they're just like seat of the pants. I'm gonna do my best to make it look, you know, something like this, but uh, it, it might look a little different. Now how this was created was using the type tool combined with the compound path tool and the contour tool to come up with this design. It requires some tweaking, it requires some uh, experimentation, and it requires some good faith in the in the product and the uh, rather the software to do the job. New artboard, let's go ahead and type the word out. Let's go find our tried and true Helvetica. Last week, when I did this work in Affinity Photo, I did it 100% non-destructively. You can go back in and alter the type all you want. Unfortunately, that's not possible here with this technique. You are going to have to, to destroy, well, you don't destroy it, but rather you, you don't get to keep it as type. It's gonna become shapes, which we're gonna do right now. I think I'm gonna do a bold italic, because I think that's what I did here. I'm also gonna bring it up in size just a little bit more. So I wanna convert the curves. I can go up here to layer. And where is it? Convert to curves. I can also hit that uh, key command right here, which is command and return. So I've got these curves and I'm gonna select them all. In fact, actually what I'm going to do, instead of selecting them, I'm going to bring them out of that group because I don't want them in that group. I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna delete that group completely. And then I'm gonna come up here to the add tool, but I'm not just gonna click that. I have to hold the alt for PC or option for Mac and I'm gonna hold it and click. And then that's gonna create this compound. So all of these letters are now kind of interlinked. They're all connected. And when I come over here to my contour tool and I drag to and fro, I can make it super crazy big and uh, super crazy small if I want. One other teaser I want to throw in real quick is I found another use for the contour tool, which I'm going to share at the end of this video. So you're going to want to stick around because I think you might dig this. We're going to bring this down. We're going to make it interesting, but we're not going to remove too many of the shapes. Like see how this is separating here? I don't want that. I do want it kind of thin, but I don't want to lose anything. So with my move tool, I'm going to double click into one of these and I'm going to move it around. And as you can see, let's see, what did I do here? I kind of went up and at an angle like that. Oh, I also, I think I did, that H wasn't working too well for me. Why aren't you letting me node this? Oh, there we go. The nodes were not noting, they were noting. Move this around and we'll move this one up here, maybe like that. And then bring the zero or the O up here. I want to kind of pay attention to this thing up here. I don't want it to have that kind of glitch, but you see sometimes the comp compound, or rather, excuse me, the contour tool can be a little bit glitchy at times when you do certain shapes together. It just, like sometimes the data doesn't know where to grab and so it creates these kind of other things happening. Of course, I can't get it to produce, but there we go, right there. You saw that little thing right there pop out? I don't want that. And if you're getting it and you can't quite figure out how to get rid of it, just move something around or reduce the amount of contour that you actually have on your shape. So that's kind of the gist. It's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be just a tad different. I'm just dragging it up, just, just because. And then maybe I'll drag these and drag these down. This is a good time to have that snapping on because it definitely holds onto that line when I snap. So yeah, so that's basically it. You know, it's just about playing with these shapes. And again, selecting the entire uh, compound, if I go to my contour tool, it's basically just I'm clicking and moving it. And you really need to go negative. You can see that blue line there. You really need to go negative in order to get those interesting, you know, kind of looks and shapes. Because, I mean, you go this way and you obviously have something and you got weird, crazy stuff going on there. But, you know, you can go that way and do that, you know. I, but, you know, this is really, for me, this is where the interesting stuff happens. And then we're going to do that. So now if I just bring in a line, if I just bring in a line and just put it there and I'd say, oh, let's turn it and let's move it and, you know, let's make it do things. If I just put it there, it's not going to automatically just 
create that that kind of feeling right there. What I have to do is bring that shape over here, my layers, into the compound. And so now with the contour tool, oh, see, how did I not get it in there? There we go. Now it's in there. Okay. But we'll make it super narrow and then we'll bring it down here like that. Maybe move this one in here like that. It's getting a little glitchy. See, it doesn't know, it doesn't know what to do with this distance here. Oh, that's what I did differently. Okay. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not paying close enough attention. I just did it like this. And I also, I followed this line, if it's gonna let me follow it. I followed this line and I just dragged that out. And then I just copied this or I did an option, click and drag. And I just copied this a couple times. Oh, I did one all the way across. Not exactly the same thing, but you know, still pretty cool. I kind of dig it. I would definitely refine this. I definitely believe this one is cooler than this one. Rotate a little bit, play with it. And you could do all kinds of crazy stuff with type doing this thing. It's just a matter of like what you're willing to experiment with. And you can build your different shapes into this. Like just use any one of these shapes here. Let's just bring an arrow in just for, just for kicks. Bring it into the compound. I'm not sure how this is gonna play out. Let's bring it down in size. We wanna do it like that, but we wanna rotate it. Oh, it's still not in the contour or it's not in the compound. It has to be within the compound in order to work. And then my contour tool and I adjust as necessary till I get stuff that's not weird. Stop being weird on me, contour tool. See, it's that shape right there. So maybe the arrow one isn't the best answer and bring in something else. There's too many things going on there. Maybe I just want a diamond. I know, uh oh, that's kind of cool. I'm already in the, the compounds, more like that. And then I can adjust my contour, move it around. I can bring it up in here, do something like that, do kind of crazy stuff with it like that, if I want it or not. It's just a matter of play. It's about play, experimentation, kind of messing around, getting, you know, just figuring this stuff out. I, I invite you to, to replicate this one if you want, or don't, go do your own thing. Uh, choose different typefaces, maybe mix up your typefaces, and then do some radical adjustment to the actual contour so that you have your sans serif and your serif mixed together, or, you, or your kind of display typefaces so that it does really weird stuff. I've never done anything but like, you know, this, so maybe I'll play around with that. One of the versions I did last week week was I took a, a, a really grungy black letter typeface and then made it even more grungy so that kind of worked out cool. I've got a t-shirt coming for that and I'll show you once it gets here. Use this to your advantage or don't or just you know do regular logos. This is how I would design logos if I was designing logos in Affinity Designer. I'm, I really like this compound contoured compound path contour tool combination. I really dig that. I actually use some of it in my own artwork and it's actually that right there, that thought right there is how I came up with this idea. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bang this out real quick so you guys can see what I did because I've already created it one time and I made this design out of these two shapes. Just two simple shapes. Actually, it's the same shape repeated. I used those two shapes and I made this. And so if you're kind of into that retro 60s vibe, you know, that you might dig that, you know, or play around with this as well, but I'll show you how I did it. So I took these two shapes, I turned them into a, a compound by option and clicking the add button, then the contour, making my adjustments. In fact, I don't think I really did much adjustment to the first one, but then I duplicated that. And I'm probably gonna, I'm not gonna do as many layers as I did last time, so just so you can see this. So I just duplicated this layer. I can do that by going right click and duplicate, or I can hit Command J, that will also duplicate it. And so what I did with the first one is I just changed the color down to white and then changed my contour. And I want it to be a little bit considerably thinner because I want to have that big kind of bold red line. Then I duplicate that layer, change that back to red, and then make that one not quite as far apart. I don't want it like this. I want it just like that. And I'm just eyeballing this, but if you want to get more exact, you can. Command J again, white. Command J again, change to red. It's starting to look like a, a retro 60s Target logo. So there you go, that's something like that. And you know, you play around with it, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can change the color if you did this. If I wanted to, I can make this next one like that and then bring that in. And you can see this one's getting pretty small and at a certain point, this particular shape starts to kind of lose its edge. It goes from being the wide curve to this other thing. And now it's actually turned in basically like a square. So, you know, that's that, that same thing is actually happening here too. You can see it right there and down there. I kept it for the purposes of that design. There you go. 
that's uh, something. It's kind of fun. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use that too much. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. And then, of course, when you finished with all of this, you can uh, you can kind of expand them all out, make them independent shapes, and then use your you know your your subtract tool and kind of cut one shape out of the next. And and instead of this being white, it would be transparent. And you could do that, or you can change the color, you can do whatever you want. So play with it, have fun, use that contour tool, don't be afraid of it. And maybe you're like me and you don't really do logo design, but maybe you can incorporate some of these shapes and make some cool stuff out of them. Kind of like this poster right here that I designed for my daily poster project. Does any of these shapes look familiar to you? Don't know anything about my daily poster project? Go check out my Instagram. You can find me at, at Dave Conry because I do that every single day and I'm up to 40, by the time you see this video, 43, 42, I forget, but it's a lot. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you use this. And if you do use this technique, make sure you share that with me. Make, send it to me. Go to my Instagram and DM me. Say, hey, Dave, look at the cool thing I made. And I will give you a big high five, thumbs up combination. How does that work? Uh. And in the meantime, let's all stop complaining that if any designer doesn't have a shape builder tool yet. Just be patient. It'll come, I promise, maybe. Don't listen to me. I don't have any insider information. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you. Remember, be good today. Be even better tomorrow. Like this video and then watch these.